But there's that blame culture and it goes back to that error correction. What do you see your role as a coach in? And they'll often then go to just telling them, just push up. Or we, we could even take this conversation to parents. What do parents do on the sidelines? Shoot it, push up. Yep. Right shot. Because then they're trying to fix, they're trying to firefight and they're trying to fix a potential problem. They may notice that Abby is in the defense and if she doesn't push up, she's leaving the girl on, you know, so parents will do that. But what they, what they don't realize is that by them shouting the answer, they're not allowing the kid to really connect the dots and know why they had to do that. They're also putting that anxiety upon the child, no matter what age they are, because now there's a, there's a, there's a risk factor. And really, it should just be about enjoyment and fun and this constant quest to figure stuff out. And, and that's where my problem, you know, to answer your question is with it, that if we're not on the same page... We're just going to create players that, you know, aren't going to be resilient to the struggles. Like life is tough as it is, but they don't need more pressure from us. And what about the ones that can't deal with those pressures, those challenges? We might have lost kids out of the game that could have been really superstars, you know, right. or that could have been better in other areas. So for me, it's it's vital. We have to be consistent in the messages that we're promoting. And it's and a lot of this comes from the culture and the traditions of the club, you know, because obviously we're influenced by coach education. We're influenced by literature that was shared and the way that the instructors will teach us. We're influenced by the environment and the things that aren't necessarily written down and shared, but the things that aren't said, but everyone sort of agrees to. And then that influences how we see players. Because, you know, if there's this like masculine sort of culture in the club where it's like, oh, you know, oh, they didn't do this very well. They didn't do that very well. Oh, he's not very good. He's a, and then you get swear words. And the way people talk about players, it's very negative. Mm -hmm. You know, often we, the way we do our self-reflections, and I see it on the D-license courses I tutor, the players did this. The players didn't understand this or they found difficulty. And, you know, and I just think it's very negative. You know, tell me what they were good at. You know, and, and, and again, it, this forms into that blame culture and, and it, that shapes our language. That shapes our language, not just our soccer language, but our language in general. And I think our challenge as a coach is how aware are we of what we say and why? And how can we change our lens, the way we look at things, which will influence, obviously, the language that we use? Um, I mean, there's a lot of things that are interconnected that go even deeper than, you know, just the instruction or the feedback. It's, as you as you can see now, it's it's the way that we we act in response to someone making a decision. And if they make a mistake, how do we respond? And how does that influence the culture within the club and things like that? So it's 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 a big conversation, I think. 